Hello, everyone. Welcome back inside the film room. I'm Zach Goins, and today I am honored to be joined by a brand new Ted Lasso cast member for our show. We've got Sarah Niles here, who plays the brilliant Dr. Sharon Fieldstone. Welcome Hello. To the show. Excited to have you. Excited to dive in. Thank you. Excited to be here. <laughs> Well, this is a, a first time interview. We've never had you on. So there's a lot that we want to get into as far as the show, your character, everything about it. But first yeah. things first, congratulations. You know, we're in the midst of another award season. Ted Lasso continues to be a dominating force at Critics Choice, at SAG, PGA, just win after win after win, gearing up for an Emmys run. I know, you know, for, for some of these folks, it is it is old hat at this point. They're, they're used to it after dominating in season one, but for you as a new, a new addition to the cast, is it, or is it eyes wide open, just every, just taking it all in, or are you playing it cool? Um, <laughs> it's a bit of both. I'm trying to play it cool. <laughs> and I'm also a bit like, what? I mean, because in season, uh, when they got all the awards of season one, I was like, what is happening? Like, I would turn up on a day and it's like, I'd be like, Jason, congratulations again. He'd be like, no, nah, no, nah, it's everybody, everybody. I'm like, but seriously, all these awards, like, it just kept coming. Get coming. It, yeah, I guess, I guess when they were winning everything for season one, that was while you were either filming or releasing season two. And then now it's kind of working the same way as you're filming season three. Everything's coming out about season two. So that's cool that you're all together versus like spread apart as this news is coming in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I didn't know there were so many awards that could be, could be got. I was like, <laughs> like every weekend there's a new one. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's not a, not a bad problem to have, though, I'd imagine. So can't, not can't complain too much. No, and it's a really good feeling because it was like we were in the middle of lockdown. I was doing this and I didn't know about this, really know what I was doing with this character, to be honest with you. Uh -huh. And then every time it kept, get, kept getting awards, I was like, this is good. This is good. This is a good place to be right now. Right now, this is a good place. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've got to imagine that for for some people, it can be intimidating to step into a show that had that season one that was so, so just all encompassing, taking over the world, taking over award shows. And for you to come in brand new cast member in season two, for some people that could be intimidating. But for you, you step right in. You just absolutely begin st stealing scenes right off the bat. How was how that like? No, it was kind of like... Playing? Everything was clenched. <laughs> I couldn't see it, but I was just because the character, I don't know, you know, she's I feel like she's very zen, she's very relaxed, right? She's right. Sure of herself. But I was just like, uh, is that good? Is that, is I can't guess anything up. They nailed it like, season one. <laughs> yeah. And I'd be like, oh, look, who's that? And I'll be like, I'm, you know, I'm in front of Jason most of the time. And I'm a big fan of, I've said it before, I'm a fan of SNL. And I'll be just watching him and right. watching him just like putting little bits in and writing. I was like, just take it. Play cool, Sarah. Play cool. Play cool. <laughs> so, so how long in the process, like as you're filming, how many weeks, how many days did it take before you like, okay, I'm settled in. I'm good to go. I'm part of the crew now. It's not, it's not still like, I feel like I'm the newbie. No, because there wasn't any place for it. There wasn't any place for it. Cause once, once Sharon got going, Dr. Sharon got going. Right. It just, yeah. I just didn't feel like there was any place to, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> to think about being the newbie. It was yeah. like, She's that come in this place. She's comfortable here. She knows what she's came. To, she's come to do. So, yeah. Exactly. Well, I know with season three, we've got we don't have info beyond the name, but that Jody Balfour is joining the cast as a new member. So, was there any sort of uh, communication between you? Did she approach you like, "Hey, I know you just stepped in last season as the new one. What are the tips for me as I'm coming in?" Was there any sort of like special bond between you two? No, 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 no. There was no, there was none of that. You know, I think I think sometimes the best way is just to find your feet. And everybody's so it's not like you're entering um, I don't know, it's it just feels there, so there are no clicks. I am everyone I've talked to says just how welcoming the the cast yeah. is, no matter what, I mean, what role you are. Definitely, definitely. When I when, yeah, definitely when I met Brett, he was like, Hello, all right, love. <laughs> that was, the, it was like the I just, first time I then, spoke with Brett was like the most you're just used to Roy Kent, you know, and then I hop on Zoom with him and he's like, hello, how are you today? And I'm like, yeah, he's, so, he's, he's so lovely. Exactly. And um, Hannah just, what I don't know, Hannah's just full of mischief. And as soon as I met Hannah, I just wanted to hug her and we were just like, I don't know, hug each other. I don't know. I didn't, I have never met her before, but I just felt like I wanted to squeeze her. She felt like she wanted to squeeze me. So, um, <laughs> but everybody's lovely, lovely, it's lovely. So awesome that everything that we see on tv as far as 
the cast just being so so lovable is so true in real life too so that's great really? to hear but yeah. let's let's dive into to your character a little bit to Dr. Sharon you know you come in not quite definitely not as an antagonist but someone who's like just not sold by Ted's charm you know you're calling him out on his happy-go-lucky everything's okay so I asked a similar question about post season one with uh with Hannah talking about Rebecca that what was it like to be the character that kind of was not just like oh yeah everything's great because that was Rebecca, <laughs> that was Rebecca in season one you know but then to yeah. come in and be the one who is kind of against the the Ted Lasso welcome wagon um <laughs> It was kind of, it was kind of hard at first, then it was just easy, then it was fun. It was uh -huh. fun just, just to catch his reactions. <laughs> it, was like, it was really funny. His reactions were just, yeah, really funny, like the slow closing of the door. <laughs> so many times where he's got his quips and his big smile, and then you're just shooting it down, and it's, it's great comedic <laughs> effect right there. Yeah, but, yeah, it, was, it got to be really fun. <laughs> just to be the the buzzkill for Ted's enthusiasm yeah. <laughs> but obviously that is such an important role in this show we know Ted Lasso talks about way more than just football and, and comedy there is all of this uh the, the layers to it especially in season two as we're diving into mental health and to everyone's fighting their own battles that you don't know about you know your character forces Ted to confront some of his own issues what was it like to be the main vessel to sort of bring these heavier topics to a show that is, you know, technically a, a comedy? Um, well, it's, it's something I feel strongly about. I really feel that we always have to take care of our mental health, I think. And um, I really am an advocate for vulnerability. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. And I felt those things I've, yeah, I thought are really important and behind the facade you know, for both of them, there's lots of other things going on as well. I mean, right. I'm not saying it's not. Really got their own issues. They yeah, they have their own issues, and I, I'm always looking for the humanity of people. You know, the heart and the humanity. So, um, it didn't feel that hard to fight for that case. Um, right. Yeah, it felt really important to me. And even with you know Doc Sharon, that she is supposedly the person who's like solving everybody else's problems and, that, and then in episode eight in man city we of course start with the the bike wreck which is its own problem and, yeah. then, and then we see you know we hear her talking to her friend on the phone about ted last like just the frustrations with ted and then we see the the alcohol in the apartment and uh, the potential issues with drinking that she doesn't yeah. she may be solving everybody's problems but she's got plenty of problems of her own too yeah like like any psychologist like anybody that works in like therapy and they they also have someone that they go to see and you know and it's a process it's always a process we you know we're not just given a golden spoon of knowledge it's a constant journey and that's what life is about you know and I love those scenes like seeing her um even though she's talking about Ted she's kind of also talking about herself right not willing to go there you know right um and the barriers that she has she thinks it's just in the way she knows I think in a way she kind of knows that but she has to say it out loud <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah eventually we do the the walls begin to come down between the two Ted and Sharon have a, a a really solid relationship by the end and I know this is something the fans have been dying for for forever so the the letter that that Sharon writes to Ted before he leaves or before she leaves we never actually hear what it is there's obviously plenty of you know, like insinuation as to what is said, you see Ted's reaction to it. Is there, is there an actual official letter that was written or is this all just, you know, made up like you, Jason knows, you know, you both like have an idea of what was said, but there is no like actual letter. Do we know? Is that, is that a secret or is that um, information? To be honest with you, I cannot remember what was in the letter. But <laughs> I, I know that me, the actor, like Jason just, Jason just was like, I'm just going to write this letter. And he started writing this letter. So, you know, before, as we were shooting and then he wrote uh -huh. this letter, then he folded it up and handed it. And then I read it. And as, as the actor, no, he showed it to me as the actor. Uh -huh. um, and me, Sarah, got a little bit like, a little choked up. <laughs> I know it's active, but I was like, but 
wow you know and then you want yeah so then and then we did the scene but I cannot remember what it was <laughs> so there's no there's no top secret letter that's gonna appear we we might not ever get an answer for what that is but that's I, I just you never Jason. know I don't know, never know <laughs> so. um but one of my favorite things here is that this show is just known for you know a reference in this episode that will seem like so innocent and then come back up seven episodes later and be tied back into something and so yeah. this is one you know the rumor mills are a buzz for season three people have said that doc sharon is going to be a big role and people have said that trent Krim, the independent formerly the independent is going to have a big role and so no answer needed from you here but because i know you have 800 india you'd have to pay me zach you'd have to pay me <laughs> i'll break we talk the... about we can discuss <laughs> later <laughs> but uh the monetary this this easter egg that obviously doc sharon huge huge biker big fan of of riding the bike trent crim draws a one-liner at the end of season two that he has never learned how to ride a bike so if these two characters are playing a big role together and if one is a biker and one never has ridden a bike i feel like we've got to have a bike lesson scene at some point we'll see no, no <laughs> secrets for you but Nothing in the show is a coincidence. We know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so we'll, we'll have to get on the get on a, a private call after this to discuss the the money exchange to to get some more info from you. Okay. But that that's all our time today. I appreciate it, Sarah. It was great getting to chat with you, and I look forward to seeing everything for for you and everybody else in season three. And good luck with the rest of awards season. Thank you very much, Zach. If you enjoyed that interview, be sure to subscribe down below so that you can stay up to date with all our latest Ted Lasso interviews, as well as our podcast episodes, movie and TV news, and more. And be sure to subscribe to our newsletter, The Rewind, so that you can get all of our interviews delivered straight to your inbox.